If you look closely at a serrated blade, two things are probably going to catch your attention. On one side, the serrated blade is going to be flat. And on the other side, the serrations are going to be cut into that steel. So if you're here, you're probably wondering, what is the right way to sharpen a serrated knife? And I'm going to tell you that there is not a right way to sharpen a serrated knife. There's lots of ways. And I'm going to go over some of the ways, or at least the way I have evolved into sharpening serrated blades in this video. But I want you to know that that's one thing that I really love about sharpening is that there is not one way. So as you're going around and searching and trying to make yourself knowledgeable, understand that everybody is going to have their own way of sharpening almost everything. Some of them are probably more wrong than others, and some get better results than others, and some get very comparable results. What I'm going to show you today is something that I have been working towards, but in the archives there is another video of a way that I do serrated blades, and it works really well. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check that out too. What's up guys, my name is Matt, and I run the American Edge, which is a knife and tool sharpening business in New Hampshire. And I'm coming to you every Thursday night with a Thursday night grind where I sharpen something on the bench at the American Edge. Please know that this edition of the Thursday night grind and most others for the foreseeable future are brought to you by the Guild of Professional Sharpeners where we are building a community of people who are working towards starting a knife sharpening business. You can learn more about that at guildofsharpeners.org. First, let's talk about a little bit of theory on these, these bad puppies. So here's the thing, you can, uh, you can do these all sorts of ways and, and you can, if you understand sharpening a little bit, what you need to know is you're, you cut away each side. As you do that, you're gonna build up a burr, you need to remove the burr, you refine the edge. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, and I have shown you some. Today what I wanna show you is combining a bunch of different tools where I do a little bit of cutting inside the serration. I'm gonna put up a small burr on the flat side to then do a little uh, grinding on the flat side. I'll show you how I do that, which is going to put a burr in the serration. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to refine the flat side and remove that and just keep doing that. Not too hard, right? Let me show you some tools I'm going to use for this. We're going to start this journey over on the Tormac and you'll see why in a minute. But if you haven't used one before, you ought to know that the Tormac is a thirsty little machine. So you want to get her going plenty before you need to sharpen. Here I am just watering the stone. And then what we're doing for the serrated blades is we're going to round off the outer edge of that stone using the coarse side of the grating tool. Now I have a nice radius on that wheel that I can put the serration of the blade in. And what we're going to be looking for here is we're, we're grinding inside the serration now, right? So not the flat side. Here I am just checking my angle, my knife against the wheel, and we're gonna be working our way down on the inside of the serration. I'm gonna be, you see how that white spot is disappearing? That's what I'm looking for. That means I'm cutting the serration and I'm reaching the, the flat side of the blade now, right? So that white, that white spot goes away. Here we are a little further down. Oh, that was good. You see how that just disappeared? Now I have a, I'm gonna have a solid burr built up there. Check out this close up, sick. I'm spending a little bit of time. I'm not real worried about the tips because of what you'll see next, but I am inside the scallops there in all of that white spot gone. I'm gonna have a nice burr on the flat side of my blade. And then just double checking, I should have a legit burr and I'm just feeling it all the way down. I know it's there, but I like to double check. Yo, if you're digging this, do me a solid and smash the thumbs up button, subscribe, and make sure you hit the bell because this comes at you every Thursday. It costs you nothing, it helps me out. Thank you. Now we're gonna move on to work on the flat side and I'm gonna do that on the work sharp with blade grinding attachment. I'm gonna set it to 10 degrees, the shallowest it will go. We'll spin it up here, use that bed to orient ourselves, make a nice, Steady pass. Let the belt do the work. Feel the tip. 
Don't come off the belt. You know what I mean? Here we go. Now you can see that the burr has already come up because this is the second pass, but what I'm looking for when I'm doing this is that burr coming back to the inside of that serration. Double check here, maybe feel for that burr just to make sure. If you like the idea of getting paid for this as much as I like the idea of getting paid for this, and I do, make sure you check out the Guild of Sharpeners at guildofsharpeners.org. We have a solid group of people that are building sharpening businesses, and you can be one of them too. The way I'm going to push that burr back over to the flat side is with the wire wheel and the bench grinder. Kind of a light pass back and forth. It might take a little work, and this is a relatively big burr. Double check that it's all back on the flat side now. No burr stuck up inside the serration. And come back to the bench grinding attachment. Here you can see that burr popping up inside each serration. And that's what I'm looking for. Now I've pushed the burr back to the inside. Let's swap the belts out though. That was the coarse belt on the blade grinding attachment. So we'll put the fine belt on. I found that this progression works pretty well. There are other belts in the sequence using the fine belt. Even though the burr is already in the serration, now I'm just refining the flat side of the mill. Still at 10 degrees. Come back to the bench grinder and with the wire wheel, lightly pass now. I'm going to push that burr back to the flat side. Maybe take an angled pass here to get the corner-ish corner of that wire wheel. Check it out. Good enough. Now it will get fun. It'll push a little bit of that burr back, but this fine wheel is also going to start removing that burr. It's going to be a good time. Everyone that digs blades and cutting tools and things and like doing stuff needs to have cool swag. So make sure you get yourself an American Edge shirt. Check this out. Sick design. You'd look good in one of these. I'm just saying, order one now. Check the description for details. I find out. It's a nice finish on that flat side. We'll take one more pass here. Really refine that flat side. Let the belt do the work. Nice and easy. And then I found that sometimes I need to work my way from the belly into the heel of the knife to remove a little bit of the burr there. Here we are back on the wire wheel. Real, real lightly. That's a light burr now. We're going to push it back into the serrations. Come back over to the blade grinding attachment. And we're going to put on the cloth belt. This thing is sweet. I have found that it doesn't always line up like the other belts do. So it requires a little bit of adjusting on the blade grinding attachment. Paint on some of this compound. And you'll see here that the belt has moved a little bit since it's been running, so we'll adjust it a little bit all over those wheels. And we'll take a nice light pass with the cloth belt. That's the cloth belt offered from WorkSharp. Definitely worth checking out. That thing has kind of changed the game for me with that tool. A little bit. Like it's, it's sweet, no doubt. Let's check out that finish. Oh, baby. Here's where it gets crazy. Watch this. Oh, my gosh. A slicing serrated knife. That's crazy, isn't it? That thing is sharp. Cool. I hope that was as much fun for you as it was for me, and I hope it shed a little bit of light on one way to sharpen a serrated blade. But before we go, I just want to address like, what if you don't have all this stuff? Like, what can you do? Well, the principles all apply, right? So you need to remove steel from one side or the other. You're going to put up a burr. You're going to have to remove that burr and refine the edge. Maybe you can do that freehand on a stone. Maybe you remove the burr inside the serration with a rod. Maybe it's a tapered hone. There's a lot of different ways to do it, and I just want you to feel a little bit of confidence. Like, you can explore and you can practice and try different things with an understanding of the principles that are involved. Thanks for being here. See you next Thursday, and please stay well out there. Cheers.